Welcome to tonight's webinar. I'm just getting the live stream running here. Uh, I have a couple amazing co-hosts today who may pop in and out as we go. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am Kristen Heenahan. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about a fantastic topic that I think, I mean, has been a prevalent topic for many, many years, but it's becoming more and more as many of us have been shifting to work at home scenarios, working online scenarios. And so as you're jumping in here, we'd love to hear where you're tuning in from. I have heard that all across North America, we're kind of going into a cold snap. It's been chilly up here too. <laughs> Again, I was very suspicious of our mild weather and now it's proving I was correct to be suspicious. So anyways, enough of the weather report. Um, I also have Maura McCabe here as well, and she may be popping in every now and again just to add some tidbits and uh, her thoughts on the topic of the rise of the online entrepreneur. So it's good to see you all here. Hello, Jan. So let me share my screen and we're going to jump right into this. And it's going to be a, this is going to be a fun one. I'm very excited for it. Here we go. So tonight, as I said, we are talking about the rise of the online entrepreneur, and this is our 2.0 edition. We had this great talk actually last year under very different circumstances. So we wanted to swing back around and cover it again from a different perspective. And we're going to discover the benefits of starting an online business, uh, focusing specifically on the network marketing industry. So we have known for many years that the career landscape has changed. And we know that the nine to five job, while still is uh, a reputable way to earn an income, it's not as stable and, and it's not something that generations today can necessarily rely on as we would have in the past, as previous generations have. Um, and of course, you throw in a global pandemic, which further underscore the value of time freedom but not just time freedom, but also financial freedom, uh, freedom to work on your own schedule and earn a decent income wherever you are, not being tied to a specific geographical location. So in this webinar, you'll discover the benefits of starting an online business in the network marketing industry. And a couple of the points that we're gonna cover is, you know, why are more people turning to online entrepreneurship? The four reasons an online business is a wise investment, why we recommend network marketing plus much more. So the first thing we want to talk about is why are more people turning to online entrepreneurship? And I know I have my own reasons and many people who are already online entrepreneurs have their reasons, but it has really become more apparent that people are realizing the value of not being tied to a nine to five job. And this shift in mentality was already apparent in many years. I mean, I've been in my business for, well, it'll be 12 years in a couple days here. I know Maura as well has been in her business for, uh, I think about the same amount of time. Is that right, Maura? That is correct. Yes. It has been just about the same amount of time. <laughs> just as the cool technology started coming out. Um, I know, right? <laughs> I still it remember- keeps getting I, better. I mean, come on. <laughs> and so, um, but it has been it has become even more pronounced because of the global pandemic. I'm sure there's many people here who have been moved to working from home or under not so great circumstances have possibly been out of a job um, due to not being able to work from home because of the nature of the profession that they're in. So with many office workers being forced to work from home, they've gotten to experience and enjoy the convenience of not having to commute to and from work every day and being able to spend more time with their families. And I just wanna pause here for a second because Maura's here and I'm going to call on her and, and we're gonna pick her brain a little bit. But um, I know for me being able to work home, I mean, I'm not, I like, I like the drive to work, but there comes a point where it's like, oh, I just don't wanna get in the car and go anywhere. Um, how has it been for you more being able to just commute from, you know, your kitchen or your bedroom to the kitchen, to the office and not really having to get out in the cold and do it? You know what? I, I think it's a, mi a mixed bag. Uh, to be honest with you, there are times when I feel social and I'd like to be with people uh, other than my family. <laughs> just saying. But at the same time, I don't like that sort of tyranny of having to go. You know, I, I did spend a few uh, few weeks this past autumn going out and networking in a in a sort of a 
you know, like a local farm stand kind of selling situation. And I loved meeting the people and everything, but I definitely did not love the the load in, the load out, you know, all of that other stuff, um, trying to be creative about how how was I going to interact with people if they just were kind of walking by me and and smiling, you know, and, and honestly, that's, that's pretty easy because you just authentically connect with people. You do or you don't. But I'm relieved not to have to do that right now, especially with it being as cold as it is and the other aspects of concern about, you know, health safety. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I will say that because I, I get to work from home, we don't drive very often anymore. A gas tank goes a lot longer than it used to. This is to, true. <laughs> which is this great is because true. we know what gas prices are like. Yes, um, I forget to to fill up sometimes. I'm like, oh yeah, and it's like, you know, how many miles? Hundred something, hundreds of miles ago was that? Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I just want to thank you for sharing that more because you know we've both sure. been able to experience the value of being able to have a flexible working schedule, um, and Samantha as well, who I get to see your beautiful face as well, uh, hey. have been able to experience that. And actually, Samantha, just while we're here, and since you popped in, I'd love to hear your experience on you know, being able to just commute within the rooms of your house and being able to travel for fun. Yeah. So uh, that's definitely my favorite part. (laughs) I used to do a lot of commuting. So it's very nice to be able just to log on and, and, and have a regular talk that I would normally do face to face right in front of people. And it really gives me the opportunity to do the type of traveling that I like to do for fun. So it, it really opens up a lot of doors when you when you think about it (laughs) absolutely thank you so much ladies for sharing that i appreciate it (laughs) and just great little great little things that you know more and more people have been able to experience being you know i mean how many people on here if you're if you're tuning in how many of you have transitioned now and have had that opportunity to work from home whether it's through your job or maybe through a business that you started we'd love to hear you know what has that experience been like for you how have you enjoyed it Uh, do you still prefer the commute do you like being able to have the flexibility to be able to commute if you choose to because these are all things that um, contribute to how we want to live our lives and and the freedoms that that we can take liberty of so i'm very excited about that now Oops, my button doesn't want to work. There we go. There's the button. So in many ways, you know, this crisis that we've been going through for the last year has given us a taste of what it's like to become or to be an online entrepreneur. And this is just the beginning because not only does being an entrepreneur allow freedom, I mean, of course, you're your own boss, which we're going to talk about in a second, which there comes a level of responsibility that you need to take. It's not all easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, There's sometimes where it's difficult, difficult, lemon difficult. And so being an online entrepreneur allows you, as we just said, to be your own boss. So you get to work anytime, anywhere that you choose to. Unlike office jobs where you still have to be at work for at least eight hours, even if you finish your tasks quickly, you know, network marketing, for example, is which is what we do, uh, rewards smart and efficient work, which I think is incredible. But like I've mentioned, it's there is a level of responsibility that comes with being your own boss. So I don't want you all to think that, oh, it's so great being your own boss. You still have to push yourself. You still have to, in a sense, be your own boss. So manage your tasks and in a sense, parent yourself. Um, And I know that that's one of those big things that can be hairy, scary, but at the same time offers so much freedom and flexibility. And I mean, who here wouldn't love to be their own boss? I love being my own boss personally, right? Samantha and Maura, I'm sure you do too. And if you have any words to say on being your own boss, please chime in. We'd love to hear it. I'm going to jump in there for a moment and simply say that it is a process sometimes to become your best employee (laughs) when you are your own boss. You know what I mean? Because um, I do catch myself floating off into, you know, non-productive activities at times. Things take my attention and, uh, and that's life, you know, uh, especially when you're at home and you have a family and the family is home. You know, your child might be home from uh, doing their studies from home and all of that. So it's a challenge at times, I'm not going to lie. You just, you have to kind of constantly like correct 
your course and course correct and do it again and again and again and remember what the end game is or what the end goal is. Yeah, I think that's a very important point to cover is um, the cool thing is, is you're working for your own goals and your own dreams. Um, but yes, there is a level of discipline that needs to happen. Yes. And boundaries that need to be set. So that's very cool. But the great oh, thing is, is oh, yes. you set them. <laughs> It's not someone else setting these boundaries or tasks or whatever you need to do for you. It's you setting them for yourself. All right. So we'll keep rolling. All right. The second reason or the sex, second big thing is earning a passive income. Now, is anyone here familiar with the term residual income? Some people call it mailbox money. Some people call it beach money, whatever it might be. Um, but has anyone heard that term before of residual income? Because that's really what passive income is. Uh, so since you decide your schedule, you also don't have to quit your regular job, which is really cool in the network marketing industry because if you were thinking of a brick and mortar business, you're going to have to quit your job to start your business because you need to be there. Whereas with a network marketing business, this is something you can do maybe before work, maybe after work on the weekends and put it in there. Now, I wouldn't say you squeeze it into the free parts of your day because do we really ever have free parts of our day? I don't. <laughs> and so you have to schedule it in. Um, but the cool thing is, is you can sell or build a team in your spare time. So there's two ways you can do it. You can do it through focusing on moving product or building a team and earn money while you're working on something else. So you can build a business while you keep your current income. So there's no loss of income there, which is really, really critical, especially if you're at that point where, okay, you're making your bills, maybe, but there's not a lot of extra coming in. This could be the extra coming in while you still keep your current income. And I will say that's been how I've done my business is I work it as I have a job. And, um, and I still get to build that extra income, which has been incredible. And Samantha and Moore, do you have anything you want to add to that? Because I know you two have experienced some pretty incredible things with, with being able to do that as well. And if not, that's okay. Samantha, I thought she might go, she's muted. She's the yeah, girl who was in the corporate world, really <laughs> in earnest. I was so. going to point out that um, whenever you're looking at the, the possibility of starting a business, at the end of the day, any amount of residual income that you can create while still working a regular job is a total win. So it's 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 a it's really a beautiful opportunity that you have to be able to do something like that. Yeah, and that's yeah. what that's what I did. That's how I transitioned. Was I I I I built this while working a regular corporate job and was able to um, make some moves because of that. So it's mm -hmm. it, it works out. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it, and I think, I mean, if you think about the value of it, so many people have that creative entrepreneurial spirit and don't know where to put their, their time or their money or their investment, or maybe they don't have that huge capital, which we're going to talk about a little bit more, um, to invest into a business. And so why not start something here online that could transition? Mm -hmm. It's, it's just, it's such an incredible opportunity. All right. Let's go back here. I'm getting the slide thing down, I think. <laughs> so now let's talk about why the four reasons why an online business is a wise investment. So the first one is it offers incredible scalability. So scaling any business is not an easy thing. So I don't want you to think that, again, this comes back to it's not easy peasy. Um, it takes work. But if you look at a brick and mortar business and retail stores, they have a defined audience. So typically it's a radius from the business location outward, whatever that radius might be, but the customers have to come to you and you can only reach a certain geographical location. Whereas an online business, it isn't restricted by this and you can market to a wider audience. You can market worldwide. In fact, uh, depending on, of course, the company that you're partnered with, not all companies are in every country, but that's okay. Even if you look at the current country that you're in, if you can get outside even your town, that's a big feat, let alone the other side of the country, like, you know, going me going from here to Nova Scotia, that's pretty cool. Um, and so thinking of it in a, in a wider, broader range, um, one thing that I was thinking about as I was putting this, as we were putting this together is, you know, if you think about traditional business, even, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it, it involves or it relies on the people coming to it. And now in this online world, it's a matter of us being able to get to the people and the wider we can get to the people, the better scalability we have. So it's, it's a, it just offers so much more possibility than, than ever before. 
Um, and Maura and Samantha, you're welcome to chime in at any time, by the way, <laughs> if you have anything you want to add to anything. <laughs> um, I sort of came from a different, um, you know, a different world in terms of the creative world and uh, doing music before I became a mom and then moved on to, you know, raising my family. But I, I could only go so far as the gigs were really, you know, realistically, if I can remember some pretty long drives to some pretty low paying gigs <laughs> and some good pay paying ones as well. But, um, you know, and that, that was always a consideration. And then sometimes you would be washed out by, you know, the weather or the, the, the boss just, change in his mind or something uh there there isn't that kind of there's that kind of uncertainty to it too but also when you talked about um residual income i know you're going to get back to that but residual income was something that was is and was very sought after in the music community and you know you were really really lucky to get any work like that that paid you you know continually after you'd done the work and then you kept getting paid. Um, this, there's a lot more control. It isn't just, okay, you know, I happen to fit that specific voice type that they're looking for, the genre of music, and that's my wheelhouse or my skill set. And so they happen to call me and then I'm still competing against so many other people for the same slot, you know. Um, this, this, you control the, potential for that income with your own effort. And I think that's so important. It's very, very important. And you brought up a very good point about that is it's, it's not that you're competing really and truly it's you put in the effort and you get rewarded for it. And then you continue to get rewarded for it. Even, you know, after the initial work has been done, which I think yeah. is, which is fabulous. Beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's talk about the second point. The second point is it provides limitless freedom. So many entrepreneurs are drawn to online business because of the freedom that an online business offers. Modern technology allows businesses to offer operate from any location at any time, which can be very empowering. I mean, if I think about when I started my business, I started in British Columbia, Canada and, you know, was there for many years and decided I want to move provinces. Well, I don't have to close down a store. I just pack up my computer and it comes with me. The whole business can come with me. We have, you know, Tony Parker is a great example. She travels all over uh, the US in her sweet little van gypsy and is still able to do her business because it's all mobile and online. And I mean, isn't that really like the definition of freedom, being able to do what you want, when you want, where you want, with whom you want? And that's really where that limitless freedom comes in. Um, and that's something I enjoy too, because I can take my business with me when I go visit my parents in British Columbia now and still be able to have my business running. I can still touch base with people, um, but I'm not tied to it. It's, it's really an interesting concept that I never thought would ever happen. <laughs> so I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that, Samantha or Maura, but you're welcome to. Um, I know both of you have enjoyed some incredible freedoms from being able to be flexible with how you do business and what your day looks like. Um, it makes a big difference. I just wanted to share that um, on on my side of things. Like I, I really enjoy seeing shows and going to festivals. Not that I'm doing that right now, but I remember last year being at a festival, logging into into my business from my phone in the middle of the woods, and connecting with people and still being able to take 15 minutes out of my weekend to do the things that help my business or not and still be able to continue to build that that income and not have to worry about it and still doing all the things that I want to do. So it's yeah. fun yeah. perspective there. <laughs> it is a very fun perspective and I like your fun perspective because I'm very much cannot wait till we can gather again and do fun stuff like that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Festivals. We love camping. <laughs> exactly. Um, now, this one here, I think, is is such a big one. Now, if you've ever listened to any of the work at home shows or work at home webinars, you may have heard the term 
we're on a mission to democratize entrepreneurship. And in a sense, what that means or the meaning we have behind it is we want to make entrepreneurship available to the masses so that no matter who you are, what your background is, you have the opportunity to endeavor in entrepreneurship if you choose to. Not saying that everybody wants to, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's where the low overhead and high margins come in, or at least higher margins. So an online business will often allow you to eliminate some of the huge costs associated with an offline business, such as office space and equipment. I mean, my office is here in my house. I don't have to open up another location to run my business. I know some people choose to, but we don't have to. And so that, that doesn't have to be such a big part of it, which then lowers whatever the overhead initial cost is to get into business, let alone running and maintaining the business. And so that's where, you know, due to this, this is just one of those factors that can open up so many doors for people that they may not have even known were there. And looking at opportunities like this and listening to webinars like this can help open those doors and help you realize that, you know, there is an option for you if you have that entrepreneurial spirit to, to start a business that doesn't require investing half of your life savings or in some cases all of your life savings um and that's been one of the pieces and honestly if i hadn't have come into this i probably wouldn't have ventured into entrepreneurship um i don't know if many know this story but i'm going to share it quickly when just before i started my business in network marketing my husband and i were actually looking at buying the restaurant that we worked at and it was not cheap. <laughs> I tell you that hundreds of thousands of dollars to purchase, let alone what it costs to run the overhead of employee costs, um, food costs, all of that stuff is in there. And we, if we wanted to do it, we would have had to get two co-signers in order to be able to actually start, not even get anything going. Um, and so that was, you know, it just wasn't going to work for us. And, and not many people have the capital to be able to do something like that. So initially we you know backed out of that and started on network marketing and it's been it's been a much easier investment on our lives and two we don't have to worry about employees coming or going i mean there's all sorts of other things that that we would have had to deal with in there but just to help give some perspective as to the difference um, both of us have the entrepreneurial spirit but we wouldn't have been able to invest that into a business so it's uh it definitely makes it breaks down the barriers, the barrier to entry into entrepreneurship. And what you just, look like yesterday. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna hop on that for just a moment. In a in another life, in a previous life of mine, I was um, I got involved in a family business. And it was the 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 big investment came from my dad. I didn't have to come up with the money. And initially I was sort of you know, I, w I wasn't interested in um, the lifestyle that I thought that was going to involve and things like that. It, it, long story short, I did get involved in it. But honestly, some of this stuff is so, <clears throat> excuse me, there's so much involved in terms of just market research and timing. Let me tell you, it was the printing business and the printing business in the late 80s when just about everybody was just starting to get their own computer at home and starting to get copiers at home and, and print their own resumes. And so typesetting and all those things that were around that whole business, flyers and things that you could begin to make for yourself, that's the business my father invested in, God love him and God rest his soul. But it really became a struggle. And um, I, you know, and this is not by any means a way of, of criticizing his decision, but he had no knowledge of the printing business. He was introduced to an opportunity and he took the bull by the horns and decided to do it. But he didn't have that, you know, that knowledge to research the markets and to understand what was possibly coming down the road. And I'm, I'm saying that knowing full well that in my network marketing business, I feel really confident that I'm not the one who has to do all that. <laughs> I don't have to think about, you know, how to make the products, how to research the products, how to market the products. Although I do, you know, some of that of a different type, it's my own personal touch, but 
I don't have to wonder about the future of the wellness industry. I just know I, I trust my supplier and I trust that it's, it's going to be here for a while. And I didn't have to invest $20 million. Not that my dad did that, but you know, 20 million bucks. I don't have lying around to try to figure out if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. I know to do it's the R and D, the research yeah, right. and development and all that other stuff that no. comes along with, with starting a business, whether I'm you're not smart enough, frankly, <laughs> yeah, I'm just not. <laughs> it's a lot of research. Um, no, that's a fantastic tidbit to add in there. And, and again, just reinforces the value of why, you know, low cost to entry, low startup cost is so critical. Um, and why, you know, Network marketing is definitely something to consider. It may not be something for you by any means, but it, it never hurts to look to see what opportunity is there um, and to see something that can be done relatively affordably, which is great. All right. Yes, ma'am. So the last one. So the fourth reason why um, looking into an online business is a wise investment is, again, access to a worldwide market. So we talked a little bit about this at the beginning. But that is really one of the beautiful things of an online business is there's no geographical boundaries and there's no specific hours of operation, which is very cool, uh, which allows you to cater to customers from different time zones. And I think that's really where it's coming to. You know, if you think about consumers and customers today, whether you have a product or a service, does not matter. Um, they want the convenience of it coming to them, right? I mean, I personally, if I don't have to go out to get something, I would rather not. <laughs> and especially now with what's been going on for the past year, not many people want to go out as much anymore. There's more, you know, at home grocery service, delivery service. There's, there's much more people ordering online. I mean, we've seen the online spaces have been flourishing. They've been doing well before, but now it just shows the value of them. And so, um, not only is it flexible for the end consumer, but it also creates more flexibility for the online entrepreneur as well, because then you can bend and weave. You don't have to have, you know, specific store hours. You can do it when it works for you. Uh, and that's just such an amazing thing that at the power of our fingertips, we can create an amazing business. And so let's talk about why we recommend the network marketing industry uh, in particular. So all of us here, uh, who are you talking to between Samantha Moore and myself? You know, we're all in network marketing, have been for quite a few years. We love the industry itself. And here's a few reasons why you might want to consider it. As we talked about before, it's low startup costs and low overhead. There's not employees that you have to hire. I mean, you can. Uh, there's many that I know who have built amazing network marketing businesses who have assistants, which is great. Think about, you know, the person next door who's son or daughter needs a little extra income and they can help you with some of the assisting stuff, creating a job for a younger person. That's pretty cool. Um, you can start part-time and grow to full-time. So again, weaving in with starting this, if you already have a job that maybe you don't want to give that job up yet because it pays your bills. Um, I saw this great thing, you know, your job pays your bills, your side hustle builds your dreams. If you can approach it like that, you, you don't have to miss out on anything, that's for sure, or sacrifice anything that maybe you're already comfortable with the income you're bringing in. Um, you have a proven system similar to franchises. So if you think about a franchise that you're purchasing, they have s structures in place that every single franchise uses. McDonald's is a great example. You go to a McDonald's here in Canada, you go to one in the States, you go to one in the Philippines, Guess what? They all have the exact same system structured up or structure set up for how to make a burger. It's all going to be the same, um, which is very cool. So you don't have to worry about creating processes. They're built in. You can get training from people with experience, people who are doing what you're doing, who have already done it, who've already been successful at it. And you can get guidance from them, uh, which is incredibly valuable. If you think of, um, I heard now this isn't, I don't want to blanket statement this because this isn't completely true for everything. But if you think of going to business school, how many of the teachers at business school actually run a business? I've met people who've gone to business school and the teacher had never done business before. And so why not learn from people who have done it? Uh, you don't have to create everything from scratch. Most of it's already here. You just have to plug in play. You know, as we say, it's the, it's the race car. You're the driver. Put gas in the car and drive it. <laughs> It's pretty simple. 
Go ahead. You don't even have to be the one to gas it up. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you don't want to be. You don't want to be changing the tires or any of that stuff. No, so it's, it's, no. <laughs> it's good to know how it's done, but you yes. don't want to be doing it all the time. You should know that it needs it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very true point. Um, you have a proven product or service already, something that people are already using. You don't have to create and test to see if it's something that the consumer base wants. People already want it. And you're just it's just a matter of you plugging into it and promoting it. Um, you're part of a supportive community of entrepreneurs. I read the coolest article uh, by, I cannot remember who it was, but he said he enjoys being around network marketers because they're always supportive. They're always looking for ways to better themselves. They're usually, you know, very positive people who want to, who aspire to do more. And it's such a great community to be a part of. If you think about entrepreneurship in general, um, usually big picture thinkers, it's, it's a very cool community. You can create a residual income, which we talked about before. So do the work and get paid for it for years and years and years. We love that. Uh, offers rewards. There's always amazing rewards in every network marketing company I've looked at, whether it's bonus cards, amazing travel opportunities, extra cash, you name it. There's always extra bonuses that you can earn. Um, I wouldn't say you win them, you earn them because you do have to work for it. The company handles, this is the best part, the accounting, the illegal, the, not illegal, the legal, and most of the admin. So back in, if you look back way before I started, 90s, 80s, uh, a lot of that you had to do on your own and now the companies handle most of it for you. So it takes away a lot of that accounting stuff, which I don't like accounting stuff. So I'm really happy that they take care of that. Um, you can create an income by specializing in teaching versus selling. Now this is a piece that many who've looked at network marketing um, may not understand, but it really comes down to educating where if you can focus on teaching people, showing people that there's other opportunities, that there's another possibility rather than being the salesperson, it helps to, well, again, democratize what we have in entrepreneurship, helps make it available, help people understand so that they can make a choice as to whether or not this is a fit for them. And that's really where the key is. Um, and I know, Maura, you and Samantha will have a few things to say on that if you want to share about the difference on teaching versus selling, because this is a big piece. I'll go first. Okay. Uh, I can't sell. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> and yet, I guide people to resources and that helps educate them. I myself have been educated as this process has continued and gone on from when I first started. Uh, at first, I thought I had to know a lot more than I do have to know, frankly. And that kind of also goes back to the education piece, which I don't know if you've mentioned, but you don't need a special degree to do this. And then sometimes sometimes that, that, that could create some pitfalls, I think. Um, you know, because I think we do need to educate ourselves. And so that's, again, where the sort of being your own boss and taking the bull by the horns and taking responsibility for your own behavior and your own education and your own, your own training to a certain degree. There's plenty of resources. And obviously, we're here as part of our structure of resources to help train people. But, you know you still make your own decisions and there's bad, I guess what I'm saying is there's bad actors in, in every business on this earth and there's going to be some in network marketing and there have been. Um, but the bottom line is you don't need a college education if you want to have one or if you want to go out and get a health coaching, you know, certificate or something for, for being that, or if you're in the insurance industry, if you, you may need to actually be certified for that if, if it happens to be a network marketing model. But the bottom line is you are responsible kind of for your own education and the education of the people that you, you bring into your circle. Does yeah. that make sense? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Sometimes and I go all, off and I'm like, no. did I say what I meant to say? Did I say what I started out to say? <laughs> you know, that yeah. is great. And it really, it does come down to, you know, the more you can focus on educating people, the better, the more people are going to feel honored by that first off, um, yeah. because you're offering value and you're not being the pushy salesperson, which I think, um, you know, many of us, not everybody wants to be a salesperson anyways. I know I sure don't. And, and, and listen, I don't, I don't want to, uh, you know, sort of knock the, the sales profession because there's plenty of people out there 
who do that and do it well Very and well. rely on it for their, you know, their livelihood and all that's good. I just was never good at it. Um, and that, that has to do with, uh, those sort of, there are, there are techniques involved sometimes and there's strategies of, of how to talk to people and stuff. And I'd rather just talk to people. I'd rather just invite them to look at something Mm -hmm. and help them see it and guide them through it. And if they choose, yes, it's because they got the information that helped them make that choice. I'm not twisting their arm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sam, I know you have something you want to add too. Go for it. Yeah. So I actually came from feeling very confident in being able to sell And originally, uh, I had approached my business that way, but I very quickly realized that this type of industry isn't about selling things. It's about making connections with people and showing them other opportunities to do things differently and letting them or leading them to resources that let them learn about the differences and decide for themselves. So although I felt really confident in selling, it did not pan out the way that I thought it was going to, because that's really not what this type of industry is about. You can approach it that way, but you don't get as far if you're not actually trying to build a network of people who you genuinely want to be around. So yeah. it's, it's kind of like a double win. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It really is. We always say this is the family we choose, uh, which I think is very accurate. Oh, yes. Awesome. All right. And the last point of why we recommend network marketing is one, you know, you can do it all online. You can do it using your laptop and smartphone if you choose to. And I mean, now it's pretty much that's what you got to do because uh, not many people are gathering and and all that. And to be honest with you, I was never one for doing in-home events. I think I did a couple and they weren't my favorite. I much prefer, you know, doing it this way where it's, you know, you do it online. You're there. You can jump from meeting to meeting. You don't have to worry if someone doesn't show up and have to waste the gas to get there and back and all that rigmarole. You can do it all from the comfort of your devices. It's pretty cool. All right. So let's talk a little bit. Uh, We're going to wrap up here. I just want to thank you all again for sticking around and listening to us chat. Um, So let's talk about how to get started. So if you're curious to learn how you can experience the benefits of becoming an online entrepreneur, then what I'd like to do is invite you to take a look at our no risk tour of the business center. And how you do that is you get in touch with the person who invited you to this event, or uh, if you're watching live from the work at home Facebook group, how whoever invited you to that group and ask them if you can take a tour. And in there, you can explore the opportunity to get ahead with an online business that you can run from your smartphone and your laptop. And what we're going to, what you'll see in there is the marketing or not the marketing, but the market that is experiencing phenomenal growth worldwide, the high quality consumable products that our customers buy from us online daily, how you can create sales without having to be the salesperson the 60 year old supplier that we've partnered with and the business model, our competitive advantage or our secret sauce, the fabulous benefits like expense paid travel, there's bonus cars, extra income, flexibility, security, so, so, so much more, how you can do it in your spare time. And the best part is how you can get started on a budget. So again, if you'd like to learn and just see what's available, see what possibility is here, get in touch with the person who invited you to this event or to the Facebook group, and they'd be happy to give you 